Uh, good evening. I'm Isaac Kramers. Uh, today I'll be presenting my thesis on the design and construction of a multi-purpose autonomous service vessel. Uh, my advisor is Professor Michael Martin. These are the uh, topics I'll be presenting uh, in this presentation. Uh, they're shown here. The objectives for the thesis was to develop a cost-effective, simple, yet versatile ASV platform for the use in academia and nonprofit organizations. As for the background for this presentation, uh, autonomous craft are among us. There's uh, nothing stopping them. Um, they include not only ships, but as well as uh, aircraft and cars. Uh, when you think about their use, they used to be thought restricted to research, uh, military, government work. Um, but in this day, we are seeing more and more of their implementation in the commercial sector as well as um, the hobbyists. Um, leading the commercial sector. Leading the commercial sector are both um, Google and Tesla. They have made great leads in autonomous cars. Whereas in the aircraft, DJI and um, Amazon Prime have been working on making aircraft more um, implementable into the commercial and hobby sector. It's not a question of if autonomy will affect, impact us, it's just a matter of when it will. Ideas and innovation drive advancements in the industry. Um, through many of these advance, though many of these advancements come from companies and research firms, um, there's a large talent base out in the general public. Um, the masses provide a wealth of knowledge and ideas, um, but their only limit is accessibility to information. The more accessibility information um, the more accessible that they are, are to this information and projects, the more that they can implement their ideas into the field. Everyone has their own specialty. Um, when, they have, when they have access to um, projects, they can implement their own ideas and uh, their special uh, knowledge into these projects to benefit them as a whole. I hope to provide this accessibility uh, by developing an autonomous service platform uh, to further the research in ASVs. Uh, both the design and the code will be made open source uh, I hope that will be an enabler and a starting point for people to start working on developing this technology. Uh, the open source will allow someone that specializes in software and not so much native architecture to acquire a platform and add their um, software expertise to it, whereas um, someone that specializes in native architecture may lack the, um, the knowledge and software can uh, add their native architecture uh, expertise to the project and not necessarily worry about the software. There are two main target groups that I wanted to pursue with this project, academia and nonprofits. Um, by introducing this platform into academia, I present a new path to spur interest in the field of autonomous surface vessels. Um, they can also be used in a classroom and lab setting to learn about sea keeping, maneuvering, um, and other um, fields of naval architecture. And they can also be used um, for use in uh, teaching robotics, programming, and um, systems development. Um, beyond the initial introduction to ASVs, they can act as a platform to further research uh, in this technology. Um, they can start. Uh, they can use these to do experiments and test out their new ideas. Nonprofits are the second main group I want to focus on. Um, they provide uh, missions for the vessel to be actually designed to. They're, they provide concrete parameters for the vessels for the design point. Um, they can use these ASVs platforms as tools for their work for data collection. Um, rather than sending out people on manned vessels to collect water samples, um, this is a more cost-effective and uh, convenient manner. We need to understand the capabilities of our users, what resources that would be available to them. Um, for this project, I assume that the average user would be a student at an um, undergraduate university. Um, at such a university, we might expect that they would have access to a wood shop, a machine shop, and a 3D printer. Um, we also have to realize that they're probably on a fixed budget, so it's uh, important to minimize the cost of the vessel and the components that go into it. Um, also, the intended users are not experts in every field of the design, the architecture, and the software. Therefore, we have to account for their limited resources and expertise and develop a platform that is both practical for manufacturing and for operation. With the requirements and the capabilities of the users known, we can now establish particulars for the vessel to be laid out. A payload of five kilograms will be set. Um, this will be adequate for any payload, any um, sensors or equipment that they want to use for research or that the nonprofits want to use for their investigations. Um, 
an endurance of eight hours was selected. Um, this is to match the typical work day and to uh, provide adequate time for any worthwhile data collection. The speed of five knots was selected uh, to provide adequate maneuverability and range for the vessel. And the budget was set at $1,000 to keep it affordable. The manufacturing methods were to remain those available at undergraduate university. And all drawings, code, and procedures will remain open source um, to promote um, further development and for easy understanding for the vessel. The design is to highlight versatility to maximize the functionality of the platform versus the cost. For the approach of this, the design of the ASV will be based on naval architecture and marine engineering standards. Um, there will be trade-off analyses performed at each point of the design in regards to hull, power, and control, and all their components. There will also be, uh, there'll be a developed a detailed documentation um, for all the components, including build materials, procedures, and um, commenting the code out. And the overall goal for the autonomy of this festival at this time will be limited on directing the vessel with waypoints uh, by user inputting predefined courses for the vessel, rather than the vessel adapting to its situation. Now moving on to the design. For the naval architecture side, I considered three main hull forms for the vessel. Um, in particular, I focused on the stability and the propulsion aspect. There were three hull configures that I focused on. Um, they were monohull, catamaran, and trimarans. And uh, for each of them, I looked at their benefits and their drawbacks. I modified, I produced several hull forms of the three based on the initial parameters and then calculated the stability and the propulsion for each. The end result was the selection of the trimaran. What I found was that the monohull mono lacks the uh, initial stability and the deck space that the trimaran and the catamaran had, but then the catamaran required a dual propulsion system which ended up having uh, added complexities with the assembly and the install and also had lower propulsion efficiencies. For the initial hull form, I made uh, modifications to, re to refine the design for uh, bow flare for waves, as well as to hollow out the interior for room for electronics. Uh, the image to the right shows the final design um, that was created in Rhino 3D. Uh, the hull was then milled from rigid insulation foam. Uh, these toolpaths were created in Fusion 360, a uh, uh, relatively cheap program that is available to students and to the commercial. Uh, the milling for the hull took about eight hours, but I estimate that can be reduced to three hours with further optimization of the project. The deck for each hull is cut out of a quarter inch plywood and a sandwich to fit the hull. This provides adequate supports for any equipment and structure that needs to be mounted. The hull and the deck were then covered in two layers of fiberglass to provide adequate, um, adequate strength and as well as uh, waterproofing. Next it was sanded and then finally painted. Um, shown here is the completed vessel after it was milled, sanded, uh, painted, and components were added on it. The prop shaft and the rudder stock pose an interesting challenge for the vessel. Uh, for the prop shaft, uh, prop shaft, I just decided to go with a stern turn arrangement, which is a common arrangement chosen in um, the RC model world. Uh, the shaft is surrounded by a larger tube and capped at each end with bushings. The tube is then filled with oil which is to slow the intake of water through the stern tube into the vessel. There will be some leakage, but due to the endurance of only eight hours, there will be a small collection uh, pan or a little sponge that will be used to collect any uh, intake of water into the vessel. Uh, the motor is then mounted onto a bracket that is just made from plywood, which is then bolted to the deck. The rudder stock has a similar arrangement where it has a tube and bushings. However, it is not filled with oil, and it also passes completely through the hull, uh, through the bottom of the hull and then also through the deck. Uh, eliminating any risk of water entering the vessel. Again, all these components were sourced um, uh, from off-the-shelf parts, such as on that hardware stores. The propeller was developed using a B-series regression analysis. Uh, the results from this analysis were then fed into a software, and a parametric uh, model uh, for the a parametric model was then generated for the propeller. This was then fed into another modeling software, where I added in hub. Um, filleted uh, any edges, and then prepped it for 3D printing. As we see on the right is the final design for the propeller, and then to the bottom is the printed model. The arrangement of the rudder system is shown to the right. The rudder was sized using formulas from principles of naval architecture. Um, its cross-section was chosen to be a NACA 12 um, series, 
and then as it then that is extruded along the profile. Um, again, then the rudder was then uh, modeled and eventually printed. Uh, to control the rudder, I opted to go with a linear actuator um, that was connected to a rudder arm um, that was connected to the rudder stock. The actuator has many benefits. Um, when there is it is able to hold a position under no power, and it is uh, very quick acting and very precise. The electronics on board include the motors, the sensors, and the control boards. Um, the control boards and the enclosure can be seen to the right. Uh, it is important that they are all able to interact together and communicate effectively. It is also important to note that they each operate on their own voltages. Uh, the motor operates at 16.8 volts, the voltage of the battery. Uh, the linear, act oper linear actuator operates at 12 volts. Uh, the control boards operate at 5 volts, and then all the sensors operate at 3 volts. Therefore, voltage regulators need to be incorporated to ensure that they all receive their correct voltage. After construction, it needs to be figured out how all the inputs um, and the outputs are related. That's where uh, the microcontroller comes in. Uh, an Arduino is a type of microcontroller that runs on C++. It can be seen to the right there. Uh, they are widely available and they're utilized within academia and the hobby industry. They have many digital and analog inputs and outputs uh, to read and read the sensors and control any of the linear actuators and motors. There are also many communication methods that can be used with the Arduino. Uh, they include both um, serial, uh, I squared C, among many others. The Arduino was selected for the main control for this vessel um, to run the to run the systems, the communications, and the data selection. Uh, in addition, there's tremendous support not only for the hardware, but for the software. There are many open source libraries that can be used effectively for this project. A brushless DC motor was selected to run the propulsion system for this vessel. Um, a trade-off analysis was performed with this to uh, compare the benefits versus cons compared to brush motors. It is controlled using electronic speed controller, or ESC, uh, which has many similarities to a variable frequency drive. Uh, there, which send pulses over three wires to the motor. Uh, it can be seen to the right there. It is able to control both direction and speed of the motor, and the ESC can, itself can be control, controlled through a single input wire um, using PDF, PWM, a signal from the Arduino. The waypoint navigation mode allows for the vessel to complete a pre-programmed course, um, relative uh, pre-programmed course by repeatedly examining its current position and the desired waypoint. Uh, what it does is it then it adjusts, um, makes any adjustments to make sure you're on track towards the next waypoint. Uh, it compares the current GPS location to the waypoint and it calculates the distance and the heading. The desired bearing is then sent to the another software module, which uses a PID control theory um, loop that determines the required action to send to the rudder to correct for the course to move towards the waypoint. There needs to be also built-in tolerances with a proximity of getting to these waypoints. Um, due to the accuracy of GPS, it's only down to several meters. Um, and as well, for sea keeping, it's not perfect. So what was opted to have a tolerance, so you get within X meters of the waypoint, and then it'll move on to the next waypoint. There are also other navigation modes that I have incorporated into the vessel. Um, they include such as um, just a standby mode where everything's off and it's just floating. Another one is where you can use a remote control receiver, such as in the hobby world, um, and use that to control either the direct position of the rudder or to adjust the heading of the vessel and the speed. It is important to communicate with the vessel. Uh, this would allow for adjustments to the course, uh, allow for direct control, and for monitoring the data of the vessel and its sensors. Uh, the Arduino allows for the many methods of communications as stated before. Um, there is, on the vessel, there is an onboard LCD that displays any live information. Uh, a tethered USB is then used to program the vessel to make any direct control and use for debugging. Uh, you can also incorporate Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules as well as a 916 MHz transceiver to relay any data. Often communication methods have limits on the bandwidth that you can send the information. Therefore, um, we uh, decided to incorporate an SD card to log any data that was on the vessel. As for the testing, I have completed many um, benchtop uh, testing for each of the systems. This includes um, for the sensors, um, for the motor, for the actuator, and different chunks of the code, each module. Uh, there will also be a C-keeping test to ensure that the PIDs for the uh, rudder control will work effectively. Following that will be a waypoint test to ensure that the navigation modes are operating. And then, at the, lastly, there will be an endurance test 
to compare the final resulting vessel to the initial designs in regards to efficiency and endurance. To make this project open for future development, every aspect of the design, building, and operation must be well documented. Uh, a complete bill of materials will be made available with specifications for each component, recommended manufacturers, and pricing. A step-by-step -step procedural guide will be written both for manufacturing and the operation of the vessel. Uh, the code will be well commented and posted on online repository to encourage um, for use and to document the actual development of the code. Overall, the vessel ran a total cost of around $700 of materials, but I believe that can be reduced further by another hundred or so dollars uh, with further development and optimization of the vessel. I'm hoping that um, this vessel will be able to live up to the, its objectives, um, to be uh, cost effective and be as versatile as possible um, um, in developing the ASV field. I'd like to thank my advisor, Professor Michael Martin, as well as my other professors, uh, Richard Royce and Neil Gallagher, for their assistance. If there are any other questions. Uh, unfortunately, not this time. Soon, though. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So for the rudder, there's a PID control system which allows you to take a, you have a, it's very similar to what you have in a car with a speed controller, where you have the current speed, you have your desired speed, that's what you want to operate at, and then you have your input, which is the throttle. So what you can do is use a PID controller, um, for our setting this would be your, your current heading, your, desi your desired heading, and your input would be the rudder. So what you do is you have a PID theory, um, the formula is listed below, right there. You have three factors. Um, you have proportion, you have integral, and you have the derivative um, term. The proportional essentially takes the error, the delta between your current and your desired heading, and it will base the input put off proportionally to that. So the larger the error, the more it's going to turn the motor to correct it. The integral term, what it will do is it will uh, account for any steady state errors. So essentially, if you're turning the rudder but you're still not moving, it'll just increment it. So it will integrate the error over time. And then the derivative, what, what that will do, it will, it will dampen the system, prevent you from overshooting. Um, so what we do is we take in our um, information, we take in our current heading um, from uh, onboard IMU, um, which includes an accelerometer and a compass um, to correct for any um, variances. And then we also take in the GPS data with a module from one of the libraries that were available. Thank you.